this session will be recorded and we will have it up on our website. So anybody who misses uh, any of the details can go back and listen to them or forward their friends to listen to it as well. Uh, so today I'd like to first welcome you guys for uh, signing up and uh, attending. And also I'd like to uh, uh, thank and welcome Fred, who uh, I've known for quite a few years. Uh, he graduated in engineering from uh, Drexel University, and he majored in electrical and uh, computer engineering. He's a resident of Philadelphia. Fred, Fred is an entrepreneur and is well-versed in engineering, uh, management, accounting, and research. He's also an author and a public speaker. But what I like about him most is that he loves um, he loves uh, helping people use their self-directed IRAs to build and, and preserve wealth. <clears throat> Fred will be sharing uh, some of his favorite techniques today uh, and on how he uses those to uh, uh, build his wealth. He'll use his experience, knowledge, and business relationships uh, in order to profit from them, investing in real estate and notes. Uh, he really enjoys using his self-directed IRA and helping others learn as, as well. Uh, Fred's had over 15 years of diverse investing experience, having started out investing in real estate first and acquiring income-producing property uh, back in the early 2000s. He uh, has steadily expanded his real estate portfolio and continues to focus, uh, which centers around real estate. He transitioned to actively investing in notes uh, after the 2008-9 uh, recession, and he continues to apply these principles to grow his note portfolio while diversifying in assets within the note space. So basically, he finds ways to even diversify with the different kinds of notes that he has. Fred will be presenting about how to get started with investing and performing notes, which can vary a uh, powerful complement to the real estate and other asset classes that he looks at. Uh, having been classically trained as a computer engineer with a focus on system design, Fred spent many years working in technology startups and working in the cable television industry, which I think gives him an edge in his organizational skills from what I've seen. Uh, this is basically giving Fred an ideal vantage point from which to level that technical skill set and apply it to the notes business, particularly in domains uh, and of data analysis and due diligence process. Fred takes pride in collaborating with investors to help them grow and profit in the note space, so take advantage of that, as well as being trusted and value resource in the arena of alternative investments. In his spare time, and if you follow him on uh, Facebook, you can see that Fred enjoys the public speaking, outdoor cooking. He does a lot of fitness and training, which tires me just watching him, loves live music and concerts. And one of his favorites is traveling to international destinations with his family. One of his truly remarkable traits, and one of the reasons I have him on today, is he's a lifelong learner and rarely misses an opportunity to increase his understanding on a plethora of topics. And I know that's a pretty impressive resume. Uh, so, <clears throat> Fred, I'd like to uh, welcome you and uh, uh, if you have any, did I miss anything in that intro? No, no, Carl. Uh, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. That that was great. And I'm really... Uh, well, knowing you for a long time and watching you do what you do, it's not hard to uh, find a lot of those things out. Uh, one of the things I do want to say before we get started here is, hey, this is purely educational. Nothing's being sold. Uh, we want people to learn from uh, Fred's experience so that uh, you don't have to experience his mistakes and, and can uh, thrive 
in an environment of alternative investments uh, that he's willing to share his knowledge and expertise with. So what do you think, where should we start, Fred? Let's start, let's start with something that you just said, which is learning, learning from others' mistakes. I think that's uh, really important and it's something that can really accelerate your, your learning uh, in the investing arena is learning from others' mistakes because you could make mistakes yourself and it can be very expensive, but when you learn from others' mistakes and how to avoid them up front, that's much better. That's absolutely preferred. And I encourage everyone, no matter what, area of investing you're you're doing try to surround yourself with good people good counsel around you to help you provide you guidance and without getting caught up in analysis paralysis on some deal you're looking at it's it's helpful to have someone else look at it with an independent lens and give you feedback and confirm that what you're doing is good maybe they'll uh, open you up to some different concepts you didn't consider or a different way to do it. Now, it will help you in the long run. And that all goes towards the effort of learning from others' mistakes. So I just wanted to uh, mention that quickly. I think that's that's really important and something that sometimes we we get excited about a deal and we may overlook things. So it's always good to have a, uh, a person that's more experienced give you some guidance and, and oversight. And it comes back to the people you surround yourself with, the relationships you have and who you work with, who your friends are. It's, it's really something that's going to impact you in a major way. Yeah, your network is your network. Um, so tell us how you got started in real estate, Fred. Yeah, absolutely. I started in real estate in the early 2000s. It was during the dot-com boom and, and crash. And what happened to me working at technology startups uh, for, for years was that I started to be a little, a little uh, disenlightened at at uh, depending on companies for, for my income and, and my work and started to look at other alternatives and through, through real estate investing and investing in general, I wanted to make, get myself positioned so I was less dependent on, on my job, on my, my income and, and my career and have a little more control over, over that. And I started with, with real estate, with residential uh, rental properties and building a portfolio there. And it's something that is, is an effort. You're in there for the long, long haul over time. Uh, and over time, your, your abilities increase and you'll start making some cash flow. And that, that's really how I got started. Now, the transition to notes happened because all, all because of a educational seminar that, that I went to at my local real estate group. They hosted someone that was coming in to do a class about, ne um, about negotiation, negotiation for real estate investors presented by someone named Jimmy Napier. And he happens to be what I consider the, the grandfather of note investing. He really is. But he was there to teach about negotiation skills. And it was a great class. It was for the weekend. And as often happens with these type of classes is that sometimes the most valuable nuggets that you gain out of attending that class come from these little side comments or side side uh, discussions that come up. And at one point during the weekend, and I'll never forget this, 
Jimmy Napier said that real estate investing is a great way to grow capital when you're starting out in life and you don't have a lot. You can acquire real estate for very low investment out of pocket and grow that. However, after you've held it for a while, if you can then transition some of that capital into investing in debt, you're going to really ramp up the, the rate of growth. The rates of return start to get high. You're going to be able to grow that capital so much more. And that really stuck out in my mind. And at that, at that uh, class, I ended up buying his book. He, he has a book about investing in notes and cash flow. It's called Invest in Debt by Jim Napier. And it's available still to, to this day. This was published, I think, 25 or 30 years ago, the book. But it's excellent. It's very in-depth. And for anyone interested in note investing, I encourage you to take a look at this book. It's, it's fantastic. But that's really how I, I got interested in notes. And then over the years, I started building up a network of other note investors and getting more involved in the business. And my company, what we do is we buy, we manage notes, we sell them on properties nationwide all across the country. And this really has so many benefits, but one of the, the big things that I learned with node investing is that there is this ability to scale and it's almost boundless. It really is. Think about this. I encourage any of you that have experience with properties, rental properties, or uh, just buying properties for investment, Think about this, maybe you can buy one or five properties or 10 properties and, and you could keep growing, absolutely that's possible. But what if you increase that by 10X? What if you ended up going from five or 10 properties to 50 or 100? Think about what would your quality of life be? Because yes, it can be done, there's people that do it, but the quality of life starts to suffer dramatically. You can't keep tabs on so many properties and manage them. And you have to grow up this infrastructure. It, it gets pretty, pretty intense. Now, with notes, you can scale almost endlessly because of the, the different vendors that are out there and setting up proper systems and processes for your business. You can really scale and it's not unheard of to have grow from having one, two or 10 notes, growing that to 100 or several hundred or thousands of notes, even with some of the larger note funds. And it's all possible because of the different vendors and and uh, using note servicers to handle your notes. And we can get about into that a little more throughout the discussion today. Now, a couple of things about node investing that I'd like to go over is that there's three, three general reasons why I really like the note business. The first one is that you're able to buy notes at a discount. Most people really like that. If you're able to buy a property, let's say you're looking at real estate, and you could buy it at a, a discount. Maybe you can get it for 30% lower than retail or 40 or 50% lower than the retail value. That's great. So you can do the same thing with notes. Notes are bought and sold on the secondary market at a discount. And that's what impacts your yields and your rate of returns when you're buying the notes. The second reason that I really like note investing is that the, the investment you make is secured by collateral. You have collateral backing the note and that gives you really good, good security. 
as opposed to other investments like our Wall Street traditional investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, there's really no collateral backing that. So you're relying heavily on the companies and the management and so on to, uh, to be a good steward of your investment. And the third reason that I really like the note business is the high rates of return that can be achieved. It is absolutely feasible to earn at minimum, I would say, eight, nine percent rate of return and easily take that up into teens as well, depending on your risk tolerance and what type of loans you're buying it's absolutely achievable. So in summary, that those three points that you can buy at a discount, your investment is secured by collateral and you can earn high rates of return. Mm -hmm. When I learned those characteristics, that's what made note investing very appealing to me. Now, for, for investors, I would say that all of, all of you, all of you people in the audience today listening on this webinar, just about all of you, you're already in the notes business. And I'd like you to think about this. Any of you have a car payment or student loans or a mortgage or a credit card, credit card account, you are in the notes business, but the matter is that you're the one making the payments and not receiving them. And if you get involved as a note investor, it's an opportunity for you to step over to the other side of the aisle and be the one receiving the payments instead of making them. And that really is, is a big shift to, to be able to do that. And this, this is an investment that ties in really well to self-directed IRAs because of the fact that you can structure it so that it is a passive investment for you as an investor and it keeps you compliant with all of the IRS requirements for self-directed accounts, mainly that you're not doing any kind of self-dealing or active involvement in managing the investment. For, for note investing, what exists is note servicers. Note servicers are companies that, that help with the management and administration of the note. And I'd like you to think about them as the same way a property manager may manage your rental property. The note servicers are managing your notes for you. And they handle everything from taking the payments from the borrowers. They handle all of the accounting, keeping track of the amortization schedule, anything like that. They collect the payments from, from the borrowers and then forward those over to the lenders. They take care of a lot of compliance uh, notifications and disclosures that have to get sent out that, that are required, as well as handling any uh, accounting details like sending out the tax statements at the end of the year, they take care of so much, all for a very, a very low, very reasonable cost. Typically, they will charge between 15 and $25 per month per note. It doesn't matter how much the amount is. And they really provide a very, very valuable service to uh, us node investors. Carl, are you still are you still there? I just want to make sure. Okay. We can move on. Note 
Notes have some, I'll, I'll talk about some risks involved with note investing. There, there are definitely some risks and I will talk about them as well as give some tips and strategies about how to manage those risks effectively. The first one is your, your investment with, with notes the biggest risk that you can have is investing in just a few a few notes the lower amount of notes you have the more risk there is and why is that because a note can certainly default there there can be problems that come up but if your investment was spread out over many notes the likelihood of of that risk is now spread out among many assets just like if you had an apartment building and you had a vacancy in one of the units uh, let's say you had a 10 unit apartment building you had a vacancy in one of the units you're still getting all the cash flow from the other nine and that's going to carry your overall portfolio and you can structure no your note portfolio exactly the same it's good to be spread out among many assets it spreads out your risk and if you have any problems, you still have the other notes uh, that are going to carry the, the portfolio. So one one risk that I would say for someone getting involved is they may want to only buy one note or two notes. And I would say look for ways to to diversify into multiple notes. And a good a good option for that is investing in a note fund. There's a number of good ones out there. But note funds allow you to spread out your risk over hundreds or thousands of notes, which, which is really nice. But there's definitely good, good ways to strategize on that. And uh, in summary, look for ways where you can diversify uh, across multiple notes. Another risk that, that comes into play with notes is in your, uh, in your due diligence that you're doing when you're looking at a deal and evaluating it. There's definitely a lot of strategies that come into play. Uh, I encourage you to utilize different, uh, different vendors that are available uh, in the note industry. Uh, starting from your, your note servicer, as well as attorneys that are familiar with note investing. They can provide a lot of guidance and assistance in your due diligence up front so that you can mitigate any, any risk before, before you buy, buy the note. Another uh, risk area is knowing who you're dealing with when, when you're buying a note. Who's the note seller? And I want you to really think about this. When you're buying a note, you're essentially signing a contract and sending a wire payment out to buy that note. And you want to make sure you know who you're dealing with, that they're a reputable, reputable person or reputable company and they have a good track record and absolutely check that out beforehand through references. Maybe you, you do a background check if it's someone you're, you're not familiar with. Note investing is heavily relationship based and building those relationships over time really helps in, in a big way. And you have people you can talk to and uh, check for re references, referrals on folks. But the worst thing that can happen is that you w send out a wire to buy, buy a note and for some reason or another, you don't get the note file delivered to you and the only recourse you have is to enforce your contract in court. It's really not a good situation to be in, but it's very, it's very possible, very feasible that, that it can happen. So you want to do everything you can up front to avoid that. Hey, Fred, can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you. Hey, sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties and dropped off and I had a call back in, but we do have one, um, question here from uh, the audience and they said for a young adult that's just starting out what what do you think's the first or best thing he should do to learn about real estate 
for real estate, uh, a couple things. I first and foremost, get yourself around other people that are involved in real estate, whether they're folks that you know personally or through groups. There's a lot of groups nationwide for real estate investing. They're called RIA groups, Real Estate Investing Association. They're all around the country. Find one that's local to you and start attending their events because you, you will go and there will be hundreds of other people there with you at these meetings and they're all at varying levels of experience. Some just starting out and veterans that have been in the business for 25 years. Definitely get involved with those groups, find one local to you and, and start attending. Another thing that I highly recommend is that there is a wealth of resources available to us uh, through blogs and podcasts and all of these things. None of that existed when, when I started out. All, all I had was uh, the RIA groups, which I attended. And they were, that, that's what I really can, can credit much of my success and education to is being involved with those groups. And I encourage you not only just join the group and attend the, the events that they have, but if you get involved and volunteer and help run, run the group, that's going to really expose you even more and almost give you a turbo charge to what you're doing because of the people you're going to be interacting through that. So at, for someone starting out, you might not have a little money, but you probably have more time. Give up some of that time in, in the way of volunteering and you're going to really see how that pays dividends to you uh, through the uh, through the law of reciprocity. It will come back to you tenfold in ways that you cannot imagine through the the relationships that you build and the people that you meet. But in in addition to that, absolutely take advantage of podcasts and audio books. There's so many resources available. To, uh, to all of us in today's modern era. Did I lose you again, Carl? <clears throat> did, you did you switch? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Did, did you switch over completely to notes or do you still have uh, the real estate you started out with? No. And can I you have... talk about the dot-com days and what got you started there? Yeah, absolutely. I still, I still have, um, still have real estate investments um, that I've held for, for long, long term, but more so what uh what I'm doing now is I'm investing in larger real estate deals that someone else is operating. And this allows me to still focus on my, my note investing business, but I can still benefit from real estate. And I find larger, larger deals. They might be uh, large apartment complexes or commercial, large commercial properties where someone else is the operator and deal sponsor and they're raising capital from investors. And that's, this is something I can do out of my, uh, my self-directed accounts. I can invest in those. I'm not directly involved because there's a different, uh, different operator than it's not myself and they're managing the investment and, and take, making sure it's running effectively. And that makes it ideal because in, in your self-directed account investments, you're not allowed to be involved as, as we know. So this is a way that it covers both, both areas and uh, both for my, my time, which is, is limited as well as for that compliance. So that's, that's how I've been participating uh, in the last couple of years in, in real estate investments. But yes, I still have I still have the ones I, I started with years ago. It's great. Yeah. 
And a lot of times people don't um, think there's appreciation in notes, but like you talked about earlier, you can get into the notes sometimes at a very big discount. Um, and as property values go up, so do the values of your notes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. The, the value of notes definitely changes. And one thing that happens is uh, with time and with what is called seasoning, which means how many months of a track record is on the note, that changes the, the value and the desirability of the note. So you can, in theory, buy a note that maybe only has one year of a track record. You could hold that for three, four, or five years, collect the payments all along the way, and then resell it to another investor. And what happens is you'll often find that the loan balance has not changed much because of the, the way the amortization table is set up on the loan your loan balance is pretty close to what you bought it for, especially in the beginning years of, of the note. So it's almost like you can, you buy the note at a discount, you hold it, you benefit from the payments for multiple number of years, and then you can sell it again and almost recoup all of your investment, initial investment, plus you had the cash flow for, for several years. And that's, that's really powerful. And there's another strategy that is used, which is called a partial. And what that is, I, I don't want to get too, too into detail on that. It's more of a complex strategy, but you can buy a note and then you can sell a partial, which is selling just a portion of the note. You're selling just a couple of years of payments, whatever the buyer and seller agree to. And then the, you still own the back end of the note. So what that has done is it allows you to recoup most of your investment capital and deploy that into a new deal. Plus you still own the back end of the note and will still benefit from that in the long run. Hey, Fred, have you ever foreclosed on a note? Yes, it, it, it happens, but not often. And it's an unfortunate uh, part of the, of the notes business. And usually what happens is that um, for the most part, borrowers want to stay in their homes. And as long as you're flexible and, and have, the, have the incentive that you want, the goal is to keep borrowers in their homes and work with them there's so many flexible options that, that can be done. And this is really where your loan servicer plays a big role in managing that effort and making sure things go smoothly. But honestly, foreclosing on, on a property, usually when that happens, it's because the homeowner gave up or they moved out and abandoned the property. And then, then you have to go in and foreclose and, and recover your investment. And if, if that happens, you really rely on the expertise of your loan servicer and your uh, attorneys to help you through that process. But it, it's not but, something I, I, look to, I look to be involved in at, at all. It's really uh, almost like a, a, a last last resort and uh, but but in ultimately your your note is still protected by by that collateral so you do have a, a recourse there so but 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 the other side of that too is uh you probably can make more money if you do foreclose sometimes is that right or not no i i I really disagree with that. Um, that is that is the least beneficial way to make money. You you'll you will in most cases recoup you'll recoup your investment and probably not profit very much. Now it, it, yes, in the rare case, if you have a high high value property and the loan 
value is really low. That's that's a different story, but uh, it's not uh, not a strategy I recommend anyone pursue. Well, I know you're one of the nice guys, and you want to try to keep people in in their in their homes. But I have seen uh, I have seen it where people have gone the other way and just say, "Hey, foreclose." Some people say foreclosure is the worst thing to happen, and other people say it's one of the best. I guess it depends where you're sitting. Yes. Um, so, uh, Fred, can you? Um, we're running a little bit out of time here. We, we got about ten minutes left. Can you tell people the best way to get a hold of you if they have questions or want to talk to you about uh, their investing and and your experience? Absolutely, absolutely. There's several ways. Uh, anyone can uh, reach out to me through through LinkedIn or Bigger Pockets, which are some of the uh, wire uh, investment forums. I'll, I'll share my contact information as well. Uh, my phone number is 215-330-2712. Again, that's 215-330-2712. And my email is fred at liberties management, L-I-B-E-R-T-I-E-S management.com. And feel free, anyone, to reach out to me through uh, any of those means. Email is probably the best, best way. And I'm happy to help or uh, provide suggestions to any of you that are interested in, uh, in getting involved. Okay, and they can see how you spell your name, Fred Moskowitz, M-O-S-K-O-W-I-T-Z, Fred, M O S K. O W I T Z, uh, and you're also on Facebook as well as uh, um, LinkedIn and Bigger Pockets, and and you get a lot of good education at Bigger Pockets as we talked about as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, a lot of good conversation going going on there. Okay, so uh, from the what was your first step when you started looking at it? Going to Jimmy Napier's, but that got you into notes. What was your first step getting into real estate? My first step getting into real estate was um, was getting involved in um, in my local real estate investors group. I joined I joined the group uh, at the recommendation of someone I knew that had told me about it. And I went to the first meeting and dove right in. I started to take advantage of the educational classes that they had and doing a lot of networking to uh, meet, meet different people that were active investors in my area. And I think that's how, that's how you and I met originally was, was through that channel. Right. And, and do you like working with your self-directed IRA and real estate and notes? And I, what do you think of that? I love it. I think that self-directed IRAs are such a powerful tool and it's a shame that not enough people utilize it. It, it, it is so, so powerful. It gives you a whole new menu of options to invest in. And the best thing is that it allows you to invest in what you know best, whether that's real estate or notes or investing in a business that you're familiar in, with. It allows you to do that. And some sometimes you I look back at, at my own self-directed account and the different different investments I've been involved in. There's so many uh, anywhere from notes and, and real estate deals to uh, I invested in a uh, private community bank when it was starting up and raising capital. That was another investment I did out of my self-directed IRA. Uh, business loans, there, there's just no, no end. And Carl, uh, 
this is something I've never done myself, but I, I met someone that did this. They bought in their self-directed account, they bought box seat licenses down at the football stadium owned by their IRA. And then they would go and, and sell the individual tickets. They had season tickets. They would sell all the tickets off using one of the online platforms for selling the tickets. And then the, the income from that would go back into their IRA. And that's almost the, the best example I've ever seen of somebody uh, using the concept where, did you ever hear the, this, this saying, Carl, the, the best way to make money is to buy a bottle of liquor and sell it by the shot or buy it land by the acre and sell it by the lot? You ever yeah, heard no, I'm 100% with you, and, and I think, uh, I, you know, in that example you gave about the, uh, uh, you know, the seat assignments at a stadium, I think they uh, made like 100% on their money every year. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great, great concept. Uh, so I, I definitely enjoy, enjoy seeing people utilize some of these different strategies and really yeah. opens up. Uh, a lot of diversity for your for your investment portfolio. Yeah, I don't know if it would work for the Miami Dolphins. You know, you got to have a team that's actually going to do something. You yes. know, people want to stay. Yes, uh, absolutely. But for the Eagles, it would work, I'm sure. Um, all righty, uh, Fred. I um, what what's one of your favorite books? My favorite books, um, oh, there's, there's so many, um, investing in debt by Jimmy Napier is, is definitely one. Another one is, uh, rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki, um, which I, uh, read that long, long time ago. And, uh, Another book that I've recently been been reading is uh, High Performance by Brandon Bruchard and learning some some good uh, high performance techniques and concepts. Uh, those are some some of the things I've been been reading. Uh, I just wanted to make one more remark back to the person that had asked about getting started in real estate. I want to uh, tell everyone about a great event coming up this fall, the Mid-Atlantic Summit uh, on October 18th and 19th, which I uh, believe you may be uh, involved with that, that event, but that's going to be happening in Philadelphia. And uh, for someone starting out in real estate, if you attend that event, you will learn so much with so much good content, learning, about people doing all different types of real estate investing. And the other thing is you're going to be around some really like-minded folks, hundreds of them. So from the networking and education perspective, it's something I highly recommend. And the best part yeah. of it is, Carl, that all of the funds raised from that event go to charity. Yeah, well, yeah, and we did we did pretty well last year on it, but I do want to say that it's uh, I think it's 90 percent sold out at this point, if not more, uh, you know, and it's in mid-October and people can look at that for the Mid-Atlantic Summit in Philadelphia in October 17th. But uh, again, go and get your tickets now if you want to go, because it is going to get sold out. But a lot of the sessions are going to be videotaped and they'll be for sale afterward. But uh, it sold out last year, uh, and this year it's um, selling out, and uh, you know even quicker. Uh, I mean, I think we had half the tickets sold, you know, three weeks after we announced it. Um, and it's downtown Philly. But Fred, uh, to close out here because we've got to go, and I know your time is precious. Can you uh, just give us your uh, phone number and? Uh, E email the best way to get you again. Absolutely. Uh, phone number is 215-330-2712. 
And my email is fred at libertiesmanagement.com, L-I-B-E-R-T-I-E-S, management.com. I look forward to hearing from, from you and uh, can connect also on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook or Bigger Pockets. I look forward to uh, networking uh, virtually with, uh, with investors or meeting up with people in, in person in the near future at a local event. Thank you. Carl, it's been a great experience talking to you uh, on this webinar today. We had a great conversation and it was a good experience for me. Thank you so much. No, I appreciate you giving us the time. Someone with your, uh, with your experience and knowledge, I think, will be helpful to a lot of our listeners. Uh, so, again, Fred, thank you very much, and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you at the summit, if not before. And everybody else, have a great day. Uh, contact Fred without any questions. If you got self-directed IRA questions, uh, camera plan, or call the office uh, from the website. Thank you very much. All of you have a great day. Thank you.